Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here, the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to part three on how to plan a flap for a free gingival graft. In the previous videos, we talked about a case from Dr. Ahmed from Egypt with a few challenges on the lower incisors with free nipple, poor tissue quality, inflammation, and teeth malpositioning, which makes this area very challenging for anybody to do soft tissue grafting. I also talked to you about the free gingival graft and the connective tissue graft in terms of the pros and cons. What are the things that these grafts are known for and can help us achieve? And also some of the downside and the disadvantages of each graft. Okay, so what, what is the answer? Uh, no right or wrong. My tendency with these types of situations, especially the lower incisors, my tendency is to choose the free gingival graft I think that predictably we can eliminate the freni, we can improve the tissue quality, prevent further recession, and if it's still a problem, we can always reposition the tissue in a coronal direction to gain some root coverage. It's not the easiest thing to do because once you've done a free gingival graft, the tissue is scarred down, very densely attached and not as vascular, and it, it's sometimes a challenge to position coronally. I also recommend you see the video on the criteria for success, how to predict success with root coverage, which is going to help you understand some of the factors when we can achieve root coverage, when not. So it's a separate video that I sent you in the past and also on my, on my YouTube channel. So check it out to know what the potential is. Now, that does not mean that free gingival grafts do not provide root coverage. They do, but not as predictable as connective tissue grafts. So I never promised the patient that root coverage is part of the deal. If we get root coverage, it's a bonus. But what's important in this region, at least in my opinion, is to improve the tissue quality. Uh, it'll increase the zone of attaching keratinized tissue very, very predictably. And you'll never have recession again. And I think that's a very good graft to stabilize the tissue. Now, if you are very adamant about using connective tissue grafting, that's okay. And I've, I'm going to show you how this can be done. It's just a little bit more technique sensitive because you have to negotiate those thin inflamed tissues. You have to negotiate under the frenum. You're constantly struggling against mucosal pull in the apical direction while the procedure is aimed to mobilize tissue in a coronal direction. So we have two conflicting elements here. But it's certainly possible if you're just starting out and if you're not as experienced in soft tissue grafting, definitely go with the free gingival graft it's been around forever, it's very predictable, it's not as technique sensitive, and it rarely fails. Success rates are very, very high. So I hope this part is clear. So for Dr. Ahmed, this is your free gingival graft flap design, and my suggestion, so I, I hope you watched the video on how a free gingival graft works. It gives you some additional guidelines and some tips and tricks. The first thing that you need to do in terms of making the first incision is identify the mucogingival junction, which is not always easy. You have to see what is the junction between the mucosa and the gingiva. And this is where you make your first incision. It follows the mucogingival junction. It's a split thickness incision. The extent of it depends on the areas that you're grafting. So if you're working on the lower incisors, the central incisors, I would extend it all the way to the distal aspect of the lateral incisors, sometimes the mesial buccal line angle of the canines, just so you can get enough and better flap reflection because as you make this incision, you'll hold the lip ideally with a piece of gauze and pull slightly in an apical direction. And as you make these uh, the incisions, this tissue will open up to a split thickness flap. So you're basically doing an apically reposition split thickness flap, exposing the underlying connective tissue. That's the part that uh, bleeds quite a bit. You wanna make sure that you're going through the frenum. The frenum is included in the flap. And at this point, what you'd like to do is stabilize this flap with some interrupted gut sutures that will not allow the flap to move in a coronal direction and preparing this as a recipient site. The tricky part here is to stabilize the tissue. Sometimes you have to go through muscle tissue, the mentalis muscle. And also there's some moderate bleeding that you need to uh, take into account. So that's uh, totally normal. This tissue is very, very vascular. 
The step after that is to de-epithelialize the residual attached tissue. So there's some attached tissue that is coronal to the mucogingival junction. With a microblade or even a new 15 blade, you can peel away the very superficial layer of the tissue very carefully because the tissue is thin and inflamed to begin with. And this completes the preparation of the vascular bed for your free gingival graft. So I would make sure that everything is stable and secure, that the exposed root surfaces are properly scaled and root planed and also chemically prepared. And that's up to you. I typically use tetracycline. And I do this before flap reflection. And then the recipient site is ready for placement of the free gingival graft that is sutured to the interproximal tissue on its coronal part only, nothing on the apical part. You can su create some lateral sutures on the sides uh, for more stability, and then adding some periacryl, which is the medical grade cyanoacrylate, for additional stability, like I showed you in previous videos. And some finger pressure, and typically that's enough to create stability. Of course, you'll control the bleeding on the donor site as well. In terms of the positioning of the graft, you have some options. Yes, it needs to be on top of the recipient site, but to some extent it can be placed on the exposed root surfaces. Uh, usually at 50% of the root surface is a reasonable uh, area to place it, but that's really up to you. Uh, if you have enough extension into the apical area and the graft stays vital and nourished by, nourished by the recipient site, you can expect not only an increase in the attaching keratinized tissue and the tissue quality, but also some root coverage. And I've had good success with that. Now, after I showed you this flap design, you asked me, hey, why don't you place some sutures on the apical part? And my answer was, if you suture the apical part of the graft to the mucosa, you are now introducing an element of instability to the graft because the mucosa will pull on the graft. And in my experience, if you suture it properly in the coronal part, use your periacryl, the graft will be very stable and it's not necessary. So I hope this video series was helpful to you, Dr. Ahmed, with your procedure. Keep me posted. You see, you asked me a simple question about flap design and I wanted to actually give more and teach the doctors about the thought process, about the problems and how we tackle them, and also about some of the dilemmas that we have between free gingival grafting and connective tissue grafting. So I thank you for bringing up this tissue. I really appreciate your commitment to learning and allowing me to share this case with the surgical master community. I know that a lot of doctors can benefit from this. So if you found this video and the whole video series helpful to you in regards to soft tissue grafting, put it to good use. Let me know if you have any comments, any questions that I can answer and create more videos and more training. Feel free to share it with other dentists. Feel free to post it on your social media. I really, really appreciate it and I appreciate the support and all the warm and encouraging emails and comments that I'm getting. So you guys are great. Keep learning, keep studying, get better and be ready to see some fantastic results. Have incredible surgical success and I'll see you in the next training.